Hey everyone, what's up? Uh, it's Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker. Uh, I'm pretty sick today. I actually called off work and I didn't go to school. So it's going to be pretty chill today. I decided I would make a video, but nothing too fancy. I'm just going to go over my notes here rather than try and memorize this all. So yeah, that's got a new setup so I can just chill and show you my content, but mostly it's going to be through voice. So, uh, this video is going to be over free and open source software. So, the acronym FOSS, or FOSS, I guess it would be. I don't really know. Um, but anyways, free and open source software is something that's really common in the software industry that you'll find when you uh, search for software online or you're looking for programs to use for your business or whatever you're doing, really. Alright, so what is software? All computer programs are known as software. This includes your operating system and any application you are running, such as Google Chrome, Photoshop, ETC. Uh, by the way, all these notes that I'll be going over, I'll either be putting a lot of this in the description or on my website, which uh, all you can find everything you need in the description. So just uh, check that out. All right, so uh, another thing you'll need to know about is source code. So source code is the software. Uh, the software is created with what's known as the source code. It's the original code that the programmer uses to create that software. So if you're programming a web application in PHP, well, the PHP code that you type is what's known as the software. Or if you're using some kind of compiled language, such as C++, well then, um, you would actually have to have the C++ code that's uncompiled to have the source code. Alright, so oftentimes when you're working with uh, software, this source code will be available to the people who download the software or buy the software so they can look at it or modify it if necessary. Now not all software allows you to view the source code and that'll get into some distinctions as we go on. So, so far we learned two definitions. Uh, there's going to be a lot of definitions here, so you may want to take some notes. First one, software, which you, uh, whoops, software. I think that's, can you even see that, guys? I don't know. Close enough. All right, so I guess I'll have to write a little bigger. Let me get my eraser here. We have software, and then we have source code. So source code is the code that's uh, compiled or ran to create the software. All right, so this is where we get the terms uh, free and open source software, FOSS. And we also get the term FL. OSS or FOSS, which um, this is, stands for free, so free slash Libre open source software. Now, uh, Libre, this is another term you will probably need to know, and um, it's a distinction between the two words gratis, I believe it's pronounced, and Libre. So, what are these two terms? Gratis and Libre. That's what we need to focus on right now. So when you're working with software, um, there's, two, there's two different types of words for the word free. Because we're working with free and open source software, so what does free mean? Well, if we're looking at the term gratis, that means free as in without charge. So you don't have to pay any money to use it. Libre is free as in you have specific rights with this software or freedoms. All right, so a, de a definition uh, for, for Libre, which I got from GNU.org, is uh, users have the freedom to run, copy, distribute, study, change, and improve the software. So that's what it means by free. So there's two distinctions free as in free of charge, and then free as in you have uh, specific rights or freedoms to do with 
whatever you want with this software. So when we're talking about free and open source software, it's talking about Libre or basically you, uh, you can still pay for it, but you still have rights. It's talking about freedom as in what you can do with the software. So that's why we get the term floss, which is uh, free or libre open source software. It's quite the acronym there. That's where we get this from, libre. Now, um, so we have the acronym FOSS, which can confuse people because people think free as in without charge, when in reality it means free as in freedoms and rights. If you want a good way to remember this, just think uh, free as in freedom of speech rather than free as in free beer. So free as in speech, not as in beer. Because if you're getting free beer, it costs zero dollars. If you're getting free speech, that means you have rights to say or do whatever you want with your speech. So most most often the times though we will just use FOSS uh, probably just because FLOSS is a dental tool and people don't like using the word FLOSS my guess. So yeah, um, oftentimes you will see the word FOSS for free open source, free and open source software. Alright now, um, that means there's two different distinctions here that we need to focus on. Uh, I'm going to go down here. We have free, and then we have open source. These are, in fact, two different things. So software can be open source, and it can be free as in speech, but they're not always, um, they, these are not the same thing. So the rest of this video we will be, dis we will be uh, talking about the difference between these two types of software. Alright, so we have what is known as, first thing we're going to talk about is free software. Uh, so newbies tend to mix these terms up and confuse people. So we are going to clear up all confusion between these two terms which you will need to know about. Alright, so the term free software comes from the Free Software Foundation or FSF for short. Um, the FSF or the Free Software Foundation is fighting against proprietary software uh, proprietary software is software that charges typically and doesn't give you free rights with the software. So I think of the Microsoft operating system. So if you have Windows 7, you can't just do whatever you want with that software. You have to follow certain restrictions and you can only use it on one computer and so forth. If it was free software, you could redistribute it, modify it, and so forth. So proprietary software highly restricts the consumers of the software. Uh, the, the Free Software Foundation is fighting against this to provide free software. Free as in speech, once again. So most software is given out to consumers with what is known as a license. This tells you what you're allowed to do with the software and what you're not allowed to do with the software. So the Free Software Foundation wants to give licenses I think that's licenses, that have a lot of freedoms with the license. So they have four uh, freedoms that are included with this license they give. One, you're allowed to use the software in whatever way that you like. Two, you can view and modify the source code. Three, you can redistribute the software. And four, you can redistribute the modified software uh, with the source, uh, once the source code is changed by you modifying the source code, you can then redistribute that modification to other people. So if you have software and you want to improve it, you can add stuff to it, and then you can uh, redistribute that to other people. Or if you want to remove stuff that's not good, 
and take that away and have a better version of the software which can then be redistributed. That is how the uh, Free Software Foundation defines free software. Uh, so people who redistribute the software are required under the license to redistribute it as free. So that means if I create a, a new software um, and then someone takes my software, modifies it, and then redistributes, redistributes it, they have to continue the same license. That means that new version of the software will also be free, which means I can then take that software, modify it for myself, or someone else can take it and modify it for themselves and redistribute it. So what I can't do is I can't take someone's software, change it, and then leave it closed source so nobody can see the source code, and then give it out for people to buy and I get all the money from it. That's against the license. So um, this, this concept is known as uh, copyleft. So you probably heard of copyright, which is often misused to restrict software uh, development. Well, copyleft is basically saying, oh, if it's free, it has to be redistributed as free. And um, I'm posting links to all where I'm getting all this stuff, so you can check that out on my website or in the description. Uh, so the Free Software Foundation wanted to create a license that could be used to distribute free software to anybody who is um, a developer and wants to work with freedoms. All right, so they came out with the license GPL, or General Public License. I'd probably write this all out, but it looks out of focus, so I'm not going to. You can just write it down if you want. Uh, so the General Public License is a huge free software license that is out there. Um, so the license uh, originated to protect the freedoms of the GNU operating system. So this was an operating system that people could take, modify, and then redistribute the uh, new improvements or whatever that they did to the software. So they created this license to protect that so people wouldn't take the software and then uh, take it, keep it for themselves, and keep it closed source code or closed source, which basically means the source code is unavailable to anybody rather than open source, which means you can get that source code. All right, so a lot of people get this confused with the concept of free. It doesn't have anything to do with money. So in fact, I can create a new modification of this operating system, which is published under the GPL or the general public license, and then I can sell that creation to other people as long as once they have that, uh, that modification, they can redistribute it or modify it for themselves. So I am actually allowed to sell these modifications. So uh, this is because the idea of free software is freedom to use the source code in whatever way and redistribute it as long as you are keeping the original license for the new product. That means I'm allowed to sell this, this product that doesn't stop somebody from copying it and so forth. So uh, let me illustrate this on this whiteboard right here. It'll be easy to see. All right. Okay, so here, here we have a company. All right, just kidding. Here we have a company, and this company creates an operating system, right? So this is the operating system they created. Well then, um, this company, over here realizes, okay, this company is giving out a free operating system for anyone to use. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it, redistribute it, but this time I'm going to improve it and I'm going to sell it for $10, right? Well, a third company right here can then take mine and redistribute it exactly how it is. They don't even have to change it and they can redistribute it for zero dollars. So that's the concept of free software. This company is allowed to take this publication, this company can take this one, and redistribute it even if it originally costed ten dollars. This is the concept of free. You're pretty much allowed to do whatever you want as long as you keep it free. Alright, 
So the idea of the general public license is not to help make software free of charge. It's also not there to help software developers become rich. Because obviously, if this person took this software, recreated it, and sold it for $10, well, that, that might get them a lot of money. But this guy comes over here, takes it, and redistributes it for free? Well, obviously, people are going to go for this software because this one costs ten dollars and it's exactly the same as this one so it's it's almost like stealing if you think about it but it's allowed because it's free software so that means if um if some guy decides okay let's say all my friends want the software it's some video editor for example and i take it i pay ten dollars well then i can redistribute this to all of my friends who are also video editors legally so now all these people have this software so if you have an operating system such as Windows 7 and you pay um, 10 bucks for it, let's just say, well, there's restrictions. You're not allowed to give this to all of your friends. You, you can't do that under the license that Windows 7 runs under. You are only allowed to use it on one computer and all the other ones are breaking this license and makes it illegal. Well, with a free license, you are actually allowed to redistribute that uh, operating system, just for an example. So um, because Microsoft, uh, the Microsoft operating system cannot be shared freely, it's known as proprietary. Okay, now that we just talked about free software for like forever, there's another type of software we need to learn about known as open source software. So if you haven't realized already, almost all free software, all free software is open source. So that means if you get this software, you can modify the source code. It's available. You can look at it. You can judge it and do whatever you want with the source code. So it, in fact, is open source. But just because something is open source does not mean it's free software. So for example, Microsoft can release an operating system, let's say it's Windows 9, okay? They take the code that they use to create the operating system and they send it with the operating system so people can view the code. That makes this operating system open source. That's because you can openly view the source code that was used to create the, the, uh, the operating system or the software. Well, that does not necessarily mean it is free because you can still have restrictions on the software. So for example, just because it's open source does not mean you can redistribute that source code to all of your friends so you can all have Windows 9. That does not allow you to do whatever you want with the software. So there's two distinctions. Free software allows you to do a lot of stuff with the software, and it's always open source. Open source software is always open source, but it doesn't always allow you to do certain things with this software, such as redistributing it, modifying it, and so forth. Now, there's different levels of open sourceness, so you can have open source uh, programs that you can redistribute. You can have open source programs that you can modify and redistribute. And then you can have open source programs where you can only look at the source code. So there's different levels of what you're allowed to do, and that's going to change from program to program, from license to license. So that's something you're going to need to look over. So I pretty much explained all uh, what I was going to talk about. But just for some extra definitions from the state of Canvas, I don't even know what I was trying to put there. Oh yeah, from the state of Kansas. Um, open source software is software for which the source code is freely and publicly available, though the specific licensing agreement vary as to what one is allowed to do with that code. So just like I was talking about earlier, you may not be able to redistribute it, redistribute it and so forth. So we learned two things from this definition. One, uh, appar apparently entire states can publish definitions. That's, that's pretty interesting. And two, 
open source software does not ensure users the freedoms of, of free software. This means that even though the source code is readily available, you can't necessarily modify or redistribute this source code in any way. This is largely dependent on the specific license, and because this video is not over licensing, we will not be getting into any other licenses besides the basics of the general public license, which we talked about earlier, the uh, GPL, which was used to protect the GNU operating system. So, in summary, there are two main types of software we learned about this in this video. I'm going to write these out, even though you probably can't even see this. Ugh. This whiteboard's really crappy, too. All right, we have free, and then we have open source software. So we have free software and open source software. Free software, which is what we talk about first, allows you to do a lot of stuff with the source code. So for example, you can redistribute it, you can send it to all your friends, you can uh, modify it, and then redistribute it to all your friends. You can modify it and then sell it for a price such as um, $1,000, for example, which is a lot of money, and then you can redistribute it. Uh, you can also do other stuff with it that the license is going to specify. Uh, so an example of a free software license is the, um, let me erase this, the GPL, which is the General Public License. This was created by the Free Software Foundation for the GNU operating system. So those are a lot of acronyms that you're probably just have to get into practice with. But basically, just think of free software as you can do pretty much whatever you want with it. It does not limit it to price. So just because it's free does not mean you can't sell it for $10. Because it's free, it allows you to do whatever you want, including selling it, as long as the final product itself is going to be free. So it has to stay free as in freedoms, not as in price. Open source software is different because you no longer have certain freedoms. So freedom goes out the window. It's just dependent upon the certain uh, license. So open source software allows you to see the code that you may be reading, blah, 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 and you can look at it and depending on the license, you may be able to redistribute it, you may be able to modify it and then redistribute it, or you may even be able to modify it and resell it, which in that case, it's pretty darn free. It's just not technically free because it doesn't have a free license. So this means that when it comes to open source software, you have to pay attention to the specific licensing to see what you're allowed to do. Same thing with free software, generally you're going to be allowed to do whatever you want, but it's still important to pay attention to uh, your limitations, such as closing the source code and so forth. Alright, so, another thing you wanted to remember probably was um, copy left, which is basically saying um, anything that was originally free, that's modified, must then be free in the end, as in speech. So yeah, that is the uh, general foundation of free and open source software, or FOSS. So uh, now, um, another thing would be to understand proprietary licensing, which tells you what you're allowed to do with stuff that's not open source, such as Microsoft operating systems, Adobe products, uh, Mac operating systems. And so stuff like that, there's tons of them. So, um, so those are the main three types of software. There's a ton more. And um, basically now you'll want to get into exact uh, licensing to understand different licenses and what you can do with those licenses. Is licenses even a word? It sounds really stupid. Anyways, that's uh, this lesson. Hopefully it was helpful. Sorry it wasn't super professional just don't feel like professionalizing it today. Just thought I'd get my notes out and teach you some junk. Um, so I was studying uh, Linux systems and it talked about 
the GNU operating system and I realized that free and open source software is a good video idea because I never really done anything like that and it's quite confusing because people think free as in money when it really has nothing to do with money at all so hopefully this video helped to clarify any confusion and hopefully this helped you become a better IT professional or a uh, whatever you're doing it doesn't really matter oh, there's other types of, le of license such as Creative Commons and stuff like that that you will need to pay attention to although this video is just going over free and open source software so if that was helpful please be sure to subscribe and I'll leave any comments like this video mainly subscribe though because then you'll get notified every time I create future content and it's free so yeah all these notes will be either in the description or on my website or both uh, you can check those out and check out all the other le website links I will refer you to. So, once again, I'm Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker. Please be sure to subscribe. Oh, shoot, I lost my mouse. And we are done.